subscribe to m code and ring the notification bell to get the latest content in the previous lecture we have seen all about data engineering what it is why it is important as well as two main pillars of data engineering which is hadoop and spark and we have also seen their significance what are their differences as well as their different use cases in every data driven organization and also we have set up spark and hadoop locally in your machines so that you can follow along and have a good exposure of both these technologies so this lecture is mainly focused on hadoop where we will see all the fundamentals of hadoop their different components that we have already discussed in our introductory lecture we are also going to have a hands on exercise on sdfs map reduce and we will see how it works under the hood in detail so without further any ado let's get into it okay so first we will start with understanding the hadoop distributed file system it is also known as hdfs so it is based on the google filing system and it has like major components which is name node and the data node so hdfs is like the primary storage system which is used by hadoop so all the data that you have which is also known as big data is stored in the hdfs layer so hdfs is really the backbone of hadoop ecosystem so all the tools which are integrated with hadoop like different databases you can use hdfs if it is a native database to hadoop ecosystem that can utilize hdfs as its storage layer so that so that's why hdfs is really the backbone of hadoop so let's discuss the architecture of hdfs in detail okay so if we talk about the architecture of hdfs it has the main component which is name node so let's talk about the name node first so let's say this is our name node so i'll name it as name node so name node is basically the brain of hdfs which means that it has all the metadata about all the files that are present on hdfs so it has like the directory structure as well as the location of each file across the cluster and as well as the permission of the files and the file blocks etc etc so let's say this is the main component of hdfs which orchestrates all the input and output activities which means that reading and writing the data from hadoop and we have another component of hdfs which is the data node so data nodes are nothing but the commodity hardware that we already discussed in the first lecture so this commodity hardware are working in parallel and it also used for storing all those data so it doesn't mean that each data node will have all your data if your data has 1 gigs of storage if your data file is of 1 gigs then depending upon the partitioning size that file is splitted up into this data nodes and stored parallelly across the cluster so which means that not every data node will have all the available data because let's say it's a distributed system so we can say it as let's say we have one name node and we have like multiple data nodes so let's say we have like the four data nodes in our cluster which stores the actual file and also performs the reading and writing operation from the hdfs so all these we can call it as the data nodes so data nodes are nothing but the worker nodes of the hdfs cluster we can also refer it as the worker nodes so if i talk about worker nodes in upcoming lectures then you have to understand that these are nothing but the data nodes so this actually stores the data file which you upload it to the hdfs so this has all the files and also these are like distributed across the cluster so this is the architecture main architecture of hdfs so let's say what if i want to read the data from hdfs what will be the flow of that process so here is the client so client is nothing but us right so we want to read the data from hadoop which is hdfs so client will send a signal to name node and communicates with the name node and then name node has all the details like which file the client needs and where it is stored on which blocks on the data nodes or on the clusters so it has all the metadata and structure of all the directories including the permission 
so which means that name node will communicate the same with data nodes and orchestrate the reading and writing operation so client will communicate to the name node and name node will orchestrate the process of reading and writing the data from these data nodes and give the expected result to the clients so this is how hdfs works under the hood Okay, so now let's talk about the key features of HDFS. The first one is the fault tolerance. So fault tolerance means our each data file or we can say it as data block. So let's say if you have one gigs of file and it has multiple data blocks which are saved on different data nodes across the cluster. But what if any data node which stores some data will fail or go into some outage. So in that we will lose the data, right? But in Hadoop, we will be having a replication factor, which means that data blocks are replicated across the cluster. So, so it means that our each data block may be present on four different other nodes, which means that if one node fails, we have three nodes and we can retrieve it without any issues. So we will not face any issues in terms of hardware failure or the node outages, etc. So that is the great feature of HDFS and we can control it using the replication factor, how many nodes we want to replicate, that data block, etc, etc. And also HDFS employs the heartbeat mechanism, which means that it receives the signal continuously to monitor all the data nodes across the cluster. So if, if in case any data node is in outdate stage or it is not performing well, then it uses the replication to replicate that data into another node to maintain that replication factor that we have decided. So that is how this replication factor as well as fault tolerance work under the hood. And also as we already know that Hadoop is very scalable horizontally. What which means that we can add as many as data nodes in our cluster without any issues because they are highly available, replaceable as well as very cheap because we are using commodity hardwares in Hadoop. It is if we compared it to the single machine, we need to stack up whole lot of RAM or storage to vertically scale that machine. But if you want to scale it horizontally, which means that you are adding multiple machines to work and orchestrate them parallelly to able to handle big data. So that's why it's a very cost effective solution and you can scale your application to petabytes of data without any issues. You just have to add more worker nodes or we can say data nodes into your cluster to able to handle that such large amount of data and work with them and analyze it to get some meaningful insights and also the day if you talk about the data locality how to hdfs has the feature of storing the data in such a way that it reduces the input and output time because in hadoop i input and output operation is very time consuming and it doesn't have the in-memory computation. So it takes the advantage of data locality such that it will reduce the time substantially to fetch the data or write it back to the HDFS cluster. And also if we talk about the use cases, we have like the data storage. It can be used as a data storage for further analytics purpose. So we can get the data from multiple sources by integrating them and that data could be further used so we can use like Hive tool, which is like a SQL skin on top of Hadoop. So we can write SQL queries on top of it if it is a structured data. So we can build like Impala tables as well. Impala is also a good technology and it also employs like SQL like structure in a tabular form, which can be further used for analytics purpose and building views to get the business insights. And also like we can use it for log processing because many websites will generate huge amount of logs every day so to able to process that to get some customer insights then at that time it can be it can leverage hdfs to store such huge information this was all about hadoop distributed file system so that's it for today i'll see you in the next lecture